Hey, what is up guys? Gitarok here. Welcome back to another Brave 9 video. Alright, so today we'll have... Uh, I'll do the analysis of the new units that just came in. Okay, so first things first, if you haven't already, so there should be some compensation because the maintenance was somewhat long. So if you guys haven't logged in to claim it yet, make sure you guys do so. A couple of premium scrolls, couple of diamonds, you know, and Mystic Dust and stuff. Alright, so we're gonna jump straight right into it. We're gonna analyze Arkan first, skill analysis. This is very important and this is gonna affect a lot of things moving forward. And I've been asking myself this question before Arkan comes into the mix. Uh, before the rework happens, I'm always constantly thinking, is Arkan going to be better than Kaelin? Is Arkan going to be better than Bane? Because those two are just the staple for Defender, right? So like Grand Hilde has fallen off. She's insanely bad right now. Like it pains me saying that for someone who owns a plus 15 grand, like she's probably not worth uh, investing into. Like can they can they make Arkan better than Grand? Like at least. And I'm glad they did Arkan this way. And Arkan is going to uh, he is good in his own way. Alright, so we're gonna talk about that right now. So first things first, if you go all the way to plus 3, you unlock this Nullifier, which is actually pretty good. Alright, so Nullifier is going to be so broken because Arkan is the, the unit uh, that he can't get buffs, right? Because of this skill. Alright, he is uh, immune to buff and debuff, okay? So he cannot be silenced, he cannot be stunned, he cannot receive buff as well. You can't like uh, use Albion to apply taunt with him, you can't do that, that would be too broken. Alright, so you can't uh, use, you can't apply Floria's healing to increase his HP, things like that. He cannot receive any buffs at all. But because of that, he's gonna be lacking in damage. So he's gonna be constantly staying in the battlefield. Uh, his job is to nullify the enemies, alright? If they have buff, just straight up nullifying them. This is going to uh, make him pretty much the staple unit to counter enemy taunt as well. So if you guys are not aware, alright? So units like Bane, uh, units like anyone that has Torn, right? Most of them can be nullified, okay? So he's a defender that sort of counters other defender, if that makes sense. You can make him move early. Okay, if enemy Bane moves first, he can be the one that moves later to counter enemy Bane, just straight up hit Bane, remove his Torn. So it's going to be quite annoying to deal with an Arcan. Alright, let's talk about his primary skill, first skill. This is going to be the his most... Uh, staple broken skill all right so he will have this ability he will not receive any damage at all period very broken you can't uh one shot him um wait the only thing that can go through gut right now currently all right at this current time the only broken skill that can go through gut is from alec or livia all right but alec cannot kill him at all because of his hp okay so my arcan can easily get up to 50k HP. It doesn't matter how strong your Alec is, you can max rank boost your Alec, whatever, max rank boost your Veronia, whatever, it will not be enough. There's just no way. Alright, this is my Arkan. I have decent runes. I wouldn't say I have the best rune, decent rune. Alright, 52.5, 51. Even with these two runes, easily 51,000 HP. There's no way, alright, there's just no, in no way that a an Alec could just go in and one-shot Arkan. It's just impossible. So that is like one of my concerns at first when I look at his skill. I'm like, okay, this skill is good, but what's the point? Because Alex is going to one-shot him. Apparently not. He's going to be really, really strong. The only unit that can one-shot an Arkan right now is Livia. Literally. That is insanely broken. The fact that this unit right now only has one counter, which is Livia. Literally. Literally. You need Livia to destroy him. Alec cannot go through him, anyone else will just hit him and cannot do anything to him because he can't receive any damage at all. Of course, there are plenty of strategies that you can try to use. Uh, you can use high HP units to basically counter that. Okay, so I I'm glad they did the way, they, they modified the skills the way they did because now he's going to be like just insanely strong in a lot of situations. You can place him in front. You don't have to worry about Alec at all. Place him all the way front, place him next to a Jin, whatever. He's going to be really, really strong. Okay, so receive direct damage every turn. So he will receive direct damage every single turn. So this is something that you want to keep in mind. And he will only heal HP when enemy's graves is created. So this is kind of a... Uh, this will make him very situational, okay? So he heals when there are enemy's grave, graves created. But he also receives damage when allies' graves are created. 
So if you have plenty of allies just like instantly died, like in a free shot, AoE combo, whatever, he's gonna lose a ton of HP. So he really depends on like he's the that defender that depends on your allies' graveyard as well. So how do you use him effectively? Alright, so one way I, I'm actually glad also because this will somewhat put Beliaf in the meta back again. So why Beliaf, right? So if you think about it, he receives direct damage when allies' graves is created. But Beliaf, if your allies have Beliaf's buffs, if they die, the grave doesn't come out first. They will be one layer of skeletons before the grave comes. So that means Arkhan will be able to last in the battlefield even longer than before. Like if you think about it that way, suddenly Beliaf is a very very good combo with Arkhan, right? It's sort of the same concept with Benshina, like uh, Beliaf counters Benshina in a way because uh, Benshina relies on uh, enemy's graves but sometimes if Beliaf yeah, uh, buffs the enemy, when the enemy dies, you have skeletons instead. So you have to kill those skeletons first to get the graves. So it is like another extra layer of protection before the graves appear. So that's something to keep in mind. Plus 15 his uh, damage from the allies grave just like reduce significantly, 11%. So it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, 6%, you know, every turn and then enemy's grave created. He will basically heal. He's definitely pretty broken. Okay, for sure. Obviously in long fights, maybe he might not be as good. I'm not sure, like, I've seen a lot of Velter showdown. Alright, Velter versus Velter at the end. Like usually when I have a Velter, enemy has a Velter. So what happens then, right? So in case of Arkhan versus Velter at the end, I think Arkhan is gonna win the battle. I'm not sure because it depends on what Arkhan can do and it depends on what Velter can do. Because uh, Velter's healing ends at 70 turns while Arkhan's uh, guard thing ends at 65 turns. After the 65 turn ends, Arkhan will just disappear and die, right? So it's either you stall Arkhan, or basically you try to one-shot him with Livia. Other than that, he's pretty strong. So this thing will basically uh, deal a lot of damage to Velter as well, because enemies max HP every turn times 50% shot damage. So if Arkhan were to fight Velter 101, I think Arkhan will win because of this skill alone. Velter is not immune to attack interference, Velter is immune to DOT. So that's something that you guys have to keep in mind. Arkhan, pretty broken in my opinion, but yeah, he's still very new, very fresh, just came out today. We're gonna wait for a couple of days and see uh, how strong he is in the meta compared to a lot of other units. He can take hits from Seto, can take hits from Angelica, can take hits from Adi, no problem. Alright, so let's jump into the three Musketeers. We're gonna start off from Camilla first. Okay, so they sort of rework her skills entirely, so I'm just gonna jump to plus 15 and we're gonna have a look at uh, the maximum best skill because these are four stars ideally i assume getting them to plus 15 is going to be easy no problemo okay deals fixed damage pretty cool all right enemies max hp times 45 percent and then he has this she has this uh co-op thing that when she's the first one to attack in the co-op focused attack effect is applied to enemies for every subsequent co-op attacks from brisa and martina so what is focus attack effect this thing okay so she will apply so she will hit enemy with this additional damage this if she's alone but if she's not alone she's co-oping with her the three musketeers and she's attacking first then they will all deal fix focus attack damage all right additional 45 percent enemies max hp every turn is a dot for one turn now i just want you guys to keep in mind that this is dot so i think against enemy enemies that are immune to DOT, it will not work, all right? Against Iris, Iris is immune to DOT, so I don't think this skill will work. Uh, only the first hit will be applied. So enemies that are immune to DOT, suddenly pretty broken. I don't know, if Camilla actually be a thing, uh, maybe the, who's the one that, that gives DOT immunity? Was it Idan? Was it Iras? I can't remember. One of them, Idan, I think. Start being stable again, I guess. All right, so she has this skill, edgy before battle. Alright, give this and give this. So when they say edgy before battle, so that means that using Julie will not increase it. So this will only be dependent on runes. So before battle, okay? So buffing this with Julie will not increase this attack and reduces the incoming damage boost. So she has an ability, uh, nullifies enhancement. So advanced enhancement nullifier and of course prohibits them from receiving stats enhancement. And lastly, 
this particular skill for 16 turns which will boost incoming damage by 65% healing prohibition now this skill is pretty good uh, if you are trying to build units for something like Orgdot or maybe uh, Arkstar as well this is going to work as well alright 65% incoming damage boost very cool so Camilla so far I think she is she's alright I wouldn't say she's like super broken uh, the reason why is because that particular skill right here is counted as a DOT so most of the time if this doesn't work she's gonna rely on this to deal damage not sure how I feel about that obviously we're gonna have to wait and see and then we have Brisa I hate her alright not because she's bad but I think because she's the most broken of the three let's have a look at this skill alright reflective counter sort of wisdom counter attacks with additional damage to enemies while ignoring enemies damage reduction effect caused by defense so this will apply this affects warriors <sighs> like this is so broken i'm not sure if she will be able to counter a lot of warriors but this from what i'm seeing right now is just insanely broken like how is this kind of skill allowed on a four star mercenary now this is like a, a legend skill right here like i'm not even even joking like this uh, it's not as broken as jin's one obviously no actually it might actually be as broken as jin's one in certain cases if you think about it all right uh, I, I, we'll go into details later but for now let's keep that in tap all right counter attacks with additional damage to enemies upon receiving normal attack from enemy defenders and magicians so against defender and magician she's not that strong okay but against you know warriors she will ignore their 100 percent defense so she will be able to counter angelica and add in. i don't like it angelica and add in is really so bad right now and the developers is making them even worse by introducing a 4 star that straight up counters them alright okay we all know that Angelica and Adin is pretty weak they die to Zakan, they die to Chalker, they die to Kiwik that is fine alright there's enough 4 star counter for them I mean people who invested in Adin and Angelica like now they have one more thing to worry about which is Brisa they need to give uh, Angelica and Adin a break right they introduced Orfina which is like way better and now I know they are all units right now they are Angelica and Adin is really really old but Angelica is still legendary and Adin is still like mileage only character to see them like to see more and more counters to both of those two I feel sad I feel even I don't have Angelica and Adin right I don't abuse these two but I feel sad for players that have them alright and then you go and look at this skill co-op when enemy dies in the course of attacking Brisa to which sort of wisdom is applied Martina and Camilla receive regeneration barrier and lasting enhancement effect as well so it's like another one of the co-op skills reduces incoming damage minus 30 percent all right max hp every turn times 24 percent healing and then there's this lasting enhancement thing if the enemy dies during the additional damage time okay now let's jump into this skill this is like the the edgy super edgy boost this is just like a, a straight up albion skill on her alone she's gonna have insane edgy boost on her own all right what's her what's her base edgy yeah good she already has 50% edgy on her own so now she's gonna have another edgy plus 50% during these four turns 100% edgy easily and then she will have this which is literally an Albion grey skill now this is why I'm sad because uh, if she doesn't have this skill at least Angelica and Edding can kill her right before she is able to counter but with this skill she will survive Angelica and Adin, I think. Like for me as an Albion user, I've used a lot of a lot of uh, units against Angelica and Adin, and most of the time with Albion's buff, Angelica and Adin cannot one shot them. Like at least not with like one or two buffs. So with this skill on her, like <laughs> yeah, so she's gonna survive them easily. Very broken, very broken. All right, this is a uh, insane skill, three hundred fifty percent. That's really high multiplier right there, and she has taught. Now granted, this is only four turns. Okay, it's only four turns but in a lot of scenario i can see this being being really useful because she has this refresh right this might actually reset the duration of this as well if the enemy dies i don't know she i think she's the most broken out of the three i could be wrong we're gonna test her for sure still waiting uh to pull for her companions and test her but out of the three most likely i'm gonna pull for her first brisa why is brisa all right let's have a look at martina all right the last one okay so martina is a bit a bit simpler she's not that broken in my opinion so receive attack interference immunity effect upon receiving enemy's normal attack so this is a uh, pretty cool okay she 
can receive attack interference immunity. She also received defense boost. So this one will multiply uh, the defense. And just in just so you guys know, this effect can stack. So she can easily get 100% defense if she keeps getting attacked. Alright, so she's gonna have a lot of defense for sure. And she also has stats weakening immunity. So if you look at it, yeah, she's essentially a Mora, a better Mora if you ask me. Like Mora needs to move first to get 100% defense, but she needs to get hit first to get high defense. So in that sense, they are almost similar, but she has attack interference immunity, which Mora does not have. All right, Mora has stats weakening immunity for sure, but you can give Mora uh, this buff with Ebony, but she can achieve this alone all by herself. So essentially, maybe she's like a better Mora in my opinion right now. Of course, damage wise, she's not right there. And also this particular skill, which boosts incoming damage plus 100%. I'm glad they didn't remove this skill. This is going to be uh, really handy if you are looking to use this skill against world bosses and maybe some of the Gate of Chaos bosses as well. So yeah, overall, their skills, uh, the three Musketeers, I would praise priority in probably Brisa. I think she's the more broken one. And Arkhan is very strong. I can't wait to test Arkhan out. I don't have Belief, uh, but for players who have Belief, you might want to consider building an Arkhan because from what I see, that's going to be really, really solid. All right, so let me know what you guys think of the units. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, give this video a like. Make sure you guys turn on the notifications as well. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Good. Bye. <laughs>